This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, fantasy, romance film called Tuck Everlasting. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The year is 1914, deep in the forest near the village of Tree Gap. May Tuck heads to town on a horse-drawn carriage to meet her two sons. After looking at some items for sale around town, May sits in her carriage and plays a music box while waiting for her boys. Soon, she hears Jesse calling her. After greeting her with a hug, Jesse gives May a miniature replica of the Eiffel Tower which she got from Paris. May notices that Miles is less excited to see her, so she remarks that he's as cozy as barbed wire. At the home of a wealthy family called the Fosters, a teenage girl named Winnie lies on the grass while daydreaming. Her mother suddenly calls her to get inside to get cleaned up. Winnie spends most of her days playing piano when she's indoors. She plays croquet on the lawn when she's outside the house, but she hardly enjoys it. Winnie longs to explore the world beyond their estate, but her restrictive parents won't allow her to leave home on her own. Winnie's mother takes her to town to buy pastries. Winnie takes the opportunity to play stickball with some boys in the streets. Winnie enjoys the game, but her mother is appalled upon seeing her running around in the dirt. In the home of the Tuck family in the woods, May and her husband, Angus, gleefully play with some toys Jesse acquired during his travels. Angus tells Miles that he's glad to have him back home, but Miles plans to leave soon. Miles intends to fight in a war, but he's not doing it for a cause. He just wants to get as far away from their home as he can. Angus notes that fighting won't solve his problems and points out that he's seen enough violence for two lifetimes. Miles discloses that someone is getting close to discovering their secret because he's been constantly seeing a man in a yellow suit following them. Jesse points out that they've managed to lose the man, but Miles believes that the man would track them down again because he seems to be persistent. Angus remarks that it would only be a matter of time until someone finds them as urban development is catching up to them. Angus forbids the entire family from going to town. He notes that they know what to do when they see any stranger getting too close to their home. That night, the man in the yellow suit engages Winnie in a conversation while she tries to catch fireflies. The man mentions that he's trying to find someone, so Winnie tells him that her father might help him because he knows everyone in Tree Gap. Soon, Winnie's mother comes out of the house looking for her. The man tries to ask Winnie's mother about the people that he's looking for, but she contends that she doesn't know anyone in town. As Winnie and her mother walk back to their home, the man whistles the same tune that plays on May's music box. The following day, Winnie's parents inform her about their plans to send her to Middle House Academy for girls so that she can learn proper etiquette and manners. Winnie objects because she's heard that the school is like a prison and she doesn't want to be like the girls who go there. Her father, Robert, insists on sending her there, so Winnie runs away. Soon after leaving home, Winnie ends up getting lost in the forest. As she goes deeper into the woods, she comes across Jesse while he's drinking from a small spring beneath a tree. When Jesse sees her, he asks her to leave, but she contends that she'll go where she wants because she owns the forest. Jesse believes her claim after Winnie introduces herself, but he still tells her to leave. Winnie notes that she's lost, so Jesse offers to guide her. Winnie walks towards the tree to drink from the spring before returning home, but Jesse stops her and claims that the water is poisoned. Winnie, however, refuses to believe him since she saw Jesse drink from it. When she tries to approach the spring again, Jesse grabs her to keep her away from it. Winnie runs away and threatens to have him arrested for grabbing her. Worried that she might go through with the threat, Jesse chases after her. As Winnie runs through the woods, the sleeve on her dress gets torn after getting caught on a twig. Soon, she runs into Miles who grabs her and drags her away. Jesse pleads with him not to take her, but Miles puts her on a horse and rides away. Jesse runs after them on foot and takes a shortcut to catch up. Miles takes Winnie to their cabin and tells May that he found her with Jesse by the spring. May gets concerned when Miles discloses that she's a foster. Winnie begs him to let her go, so May assures her that they'll take her home soon. When Miles looks for Angus, May plays her music box while nervously pacing in front of Winnie. When Winnie recognizes the tune, May tells her that she used to play it to put her sons to sleep. When Angus arrives, he points out that Winnie's presence in their house is the most important event there in 80 years. During dinner, Winnie notes that Robert will pay them to let her go, but Angus contends that he doesn't want money. Angus stresses that they'll let Winnie return home only after making sure they can trust her. Miles thinks that Winnie will betray them once she leaves, but Jesse believes that she won't tell anyone about them. Winnie's mother suspects that her daughter was taken by the stranger in the yellow suit, so she tells her husband to report it to the police. When Robert tells Henry, about the stranger, he takes Robert to an office where the man in the yellow suit is waiting. The stranger confesses that he spoke with Winnie, but he doesn't know where she is. The man asks Robert if he knows where he can find the Tuck family, but Robert notes that he can't help him. Before leaving, the stranger offers to help Robert look for Winnie in the woods and claims that he's skilled in finding people. As Winnie prepares to go to bed, May offers to help her remove her corset. When Winnie asks if she has a daughter, May reveals that she had a granddaughter and a grandson, but they passed away. May notes that their mother died too. She believes that Miles lost his good side when they died. The man in the yellow suit visits the cemetery and asks the pastor if a member of the Tuck family is buried there. 
However, the pastor notes that there is no one by that name in the cemetery. When the stranger asks the pastor if he would like eternal life, the pastor tells him that it's blasphemy. As the sun rises, Jesse wakes up Winnie and invites her to see the Eiffel Tower. Meanwhile, Robert and Henry organize a search party to look for Winnie in the woods. During the search, a police officer finds the piece of cloth that was torn from Winnie's dress. Jesse brings Winnie to a stone hill and claims that it's his version of the Eiffel Tower. He notes that it's two feet higher than the tower in Paris. While climbing to the top, Winnie asks Jesse how old he is. Jesse claims he's 104, but he recants and tells Winnie that he's 17 when she refuses to believe him. Upon reaching the top, Winnie and Jesse are both captivated by the view. As the days pass, Winnie loses track of time and becomes accustomed to living with the tux. Jesse and Winnie amuse themselves by exploring the forest and playing with animals. One day, Jesse takes Winnie to a waterfall and invites her to jump into the river to swim with him. Winnie discloses that she can't swim, but Jesse convinces her when he says that he's having an enjoyable time on his own. After Winnie jumps, Jesse carries her in his arms to keep her afloat. One night, Miles goes to town to play poker at the saloon. Another player accuses Miles of cheating when he wins the hand, but he demonstrates that he's just good with cards. Insulted by Miles' arrogance, the accuser challenges him to a fight. Miles accepts the challenge, but the bouncer immediately grabs him to prevent a brawl. The man in the yellow suit hears the commotion and sees the bouncer throwing Miles out of the saloon. As Miles heads home, the stranger follows him. Jesse builds a campfire and encourages Winnie to dance to the sounds of nature. It doesn't take long until Jesse joins her. Not far, the man in the yellow suit wanders through the forest in search of Miles. After a while, Winnie lies down beside Jesse and tells him that she wishes that the moment would last forever. Jesse asserts that they can travel the world and have more pleasant moments together without stopping. He then notes that his family has a secret that he vowed to keep from her, but he now wants to reveal it to her. He notes that Winnie is the first human he met that made him want to do so. When Winnie kisses him, Jesse discloses that he was telling the truth when he said that he was 104 years old. He then claims that he and his family will live forever because something happened after they drank from the spring. Miles interrupts him and hints that Jesse is not telling Winnie about the downside to immortality. Jesse contends that Miles just doesn't want him to have what he lost. When Winnie asks him to tell her everything, Miles reveals that they all had a drink from the heavenly tasting water from the spring except for their cat. Then, they mark the tree with the letter T to indicate that they'd been there. The family settled down and built a house not far from the tree. They noticed something strange after Jesse fell 30 feet from a tree and landed on his neck but he got back up as if nothing had happened. One day, hunters mistook their horse for a deer and shot it, but the horse didn't die because it also drank from the spring. Angus also mysteriously survived a rattlesnake bite. Since the cat didn't drink from the spring, it died of old age. Miles recounts that he got married and had two children. He wanted to find the spring again so his wife and children could drink the water and live forever. However, his wife believed that he sold his soul to the devil, so she left and took their children with her. Townspeople burned their home due to rumors of witchcraft and black magic. Feeling dejected, Miles fought in several wars, but it did not alleviate his pain. He only felt miserable after seeing men dying in the thousands. Miles notes that his children died young, and his wife passed away, old and alone, in an insane asylum. The next day, Angus takes Winnie on a boat ride on the lake to talk to her about their secret. Angus tells her that she will soon grow up to do important things and have children. Winnie will die eventually, but he points out that it's the natural order of things. Angus stresses that his family's way of life can't be considered as living, because he feels like they're just rocks stuck on the side of a stream. Angus then warns Winnie that people will fight over the spring when they find out that it can make them immortal. When Angus asks if she wants to live forever as a teenager, Winnie responds that she doesn't want to die. Angus then tells her not to fear death because it's part of the wheel of life. He contends that she must be more afraid of the unlived life. On the shore, the man in the yellow suit observes Winnie and Angus with his binoculars. Later, the stranger stops by the Foster estate to inform Winnie's parents that he found their child. He notes that she's with the Tuck family, but he's the only one who knows their location. He'll only help them get Winnie back if Robert gives him the title to the forest. Robert agrees when his wife tells him to give the stranger what he wants. The stranger then warns Robert that the Tucks are packing to leave, so they must move quickly. Soon, a search party heads to the forest to rescue Winnie. The Tucks prepare to leave as the stranger had said, but Jesse intends to bring Winnie home. As he bids Winnie farewell, he tells her that he's willing to die the next day just to spend one night with her. Suddenly, the stranger interrupts him and tells Winnie that her family is worried about her. The stranger soon turns his attention to Angus and hints that he knows their secret, so Angus surmises that he's the man who's been following his son. When May asks how he knew their secret, the stranger reveals that his grandmother knew a woman who spoke about people who never grew old while she was locked up in a mental facility. The man then discloses that Robert gave him ownership of the land in exchange for finding Winnie. He tells Angus not to worry because he'll let them stay in the forest if they take him to the spring. The stranger notes that he intends to make the spring available to people for a price. When Angus refuses, the stranger grabs Winnie and shoots Jesse. 
the stranger expresses his astonishment upon seeing Jesse recover from the gunshot. While holding Winnie at gunpoint, he asks her to take him to the spring. As the stranger backs away with Winnie, May sneaks up behind him and grabs a shotgun. She then hits the stranger in the head with a firearm stock. The man stares into Winnie's eyes as he slowly passes away. Soon, the search party arrives, so Angus tells Jesse and Miles to go. The two men flee, but Angus and May are arrested and taken to jail. The constable visits the foster estate the next day to ask Winnie what happened to her. Winnie claims that the Tucks didn't kidnap her. She stresses that they're her friends, and she lived with them of her own free will. When Robert points out that May killed the stranger, Winnie argues that May only protected her. Henry notes that May will be hanged soon because she has been charged with murder. He tells Robert that Winnie will have to testify because she's an eyewitness. Before Henry leaves, he gives Robert the title to the forest. That night, Jesse climbs through Winnie's window to ask for her help. They have to rescue May because people will discover their secret if they hang her, and she doesn't die. Later on, Winnie runs to the jail screaming for help. She tells the deputy that her kidnappers are chasing her, so the officer grudgingly grabs his rifle. When he goes outside, he sees Jesse and Miles approaching him with swords. As the deputy confronts the two men, Winnie grabs the keys and unlocks the cells to free May and Angus. As Jesse and Miles get closer, the deputy shoots them. The two men drop to the ground, but they soon get back up on their feet. The deputy runs away in fear upon seeing them both alive and unharmed. As the family prepares to flee on their horse-drawn carriage, Jesse asks Winnie to come with them. However, Angus warns him that her family and the police will hunt them down if Winnie comes with them. Jesse instructs Winnie to go back to the spring and drink the water when it's safe. He promises to come back for her so he can show her the Eiffel Tower one day. As the family rides off, Jesse tells Winnie that he will love her until he dies. A few days pass, and Winnie's grandmother passes away from old age. After the funeral, Winnie's mother expresses her concern that she's losing her daughter because she's growing up too fast. She tells her that she wishes that Winnie could be her little girl forever. Winnie soon returns to the spring, and recalls Jesse's instructions to drink from it when it's safe. However, she also remembers Angus telling her that he doesn't consider his family's way of life as living. Weeks later, Winnie and her family leave Tree Gap to travel across the world. More than eight decades pass, and Jesse returns to Tree Gap on a motorcycle. After visiting the Foster estate, Jesse heads to the spring. He drops down to his knees upon seeing Winnie's gravestone beneath the tree. Her gravestone indicates that she married and became a mother before dying at the old age of 100. Jesse sits before her grave and smiles as he remembers his happy moments with her. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.